Hello, I'm Marcel Neville. Time now for Sunday House Call. And I'm Greg Jarrett. Welcome. Joining us, Dr. David Samadhi, Chairman and Professor of Urology at Lenox Hill Hospital, Chief of Robotic Surgery. And Dr. Mark Siegel, Professor of Medicine at the NYU's Lango Medical Center, also author of The Inner Pulse, Unlocking the Secret Code of Sickness and Health. Good to see you, Doc. Nice Great to see you. Very good. All right, so uh, May is National Fitness and Sports Month, and coincidentally, there's a new study that shows that regular exercise can lower the risk to some cancers by as much as 20%, which is nothing to sneeze at. Not at uh, what's the best way to get into shape, especially if you're in your later years? So, Dr. Siegel, uh, straight right on. I was really stunned to learn that exercise can have an impact on cancers. Greg, first of all, I want to say that I had done a report a couple of weeks ago about how Sloan Kettering Memorial is looking at cancer patients themselves and exercising them and finding that their recurrence rates are down, that they're doing better overall. It has a, a, an emotional uh, component. It has a physical component. But here we're talking about cancers that haven't developed yet. We already know from previous studies that colon, breast, and uterine cancer are decreased with regular exercise. But what this is, it looked at over a million people in 12 studies. And it's in a major journal, JAMA Internal Medicine. And they discovered that over 11 years on the average, you had a marked decrease in esophageal cancer, in kidney cancer, in liver cancer, and in leukemia. Many other cancers they hadn't even looked at. And I think the reason, and David will talk more about this, I think it has to do with this inflammation that we're always talking about on this show. When you're pumping up your blood, you're getting rid of waste products, you're getting rid of insulin, you're getting rid of inflammation, you're getting rid of excess estrogen, which is why you don't have as much uterine cancer. But you mentioned something, Doc, uh, inflammation. So that leads me to my next point, which is how much exercise are we talking about? And I say point out inflammation because a lot of elderly people, they're dealing with inflammation in That's the right. knees and in the veins and stuff. So they're going to say, well, what am I supposed to be doing? What's, what's good for me? Well, I think it's interesting to learn from these studies that this doesn't apply to everybody out there. You still individualize the care. If somebody has knee pain and has arthritis or suffering from back pain, we don't want them out there every day for half an hour. In this particular study, they're talking about 150 minutes per week. So figure about half an hour a day would be excellent for this. It's a great study. At the same time, there are a lot of flaws in this study because it was self-reported by the patients as to how much they exercise or what they did. But we learn a lot from this. The question is, how does exercise? We know that it can reduce heart disease. We know it can reduce uh, diabetes and reduce obesity. How does it really reduce cancer? Two things. One is on the cellular level. They're basically your immune system can really get boosted. There's a lot of natural killer cells. Your body, whenever you have like some sort of like a, a, a foreign uh, cancer or flu that comes in, they go up and start defending it. Natural uh, killer cells or T cells are the ones that would really, as a result of exercise, can go after the cancer cells. At the same time, when you lose weight, especially among women, body fat, your estrogen level will go down, which is really a great thing for breast cancer and endometrial cancer. Mm -hmm. We also think that on hormonal level, insulin and insulin growth factors are a huge problem when you're really obese. And by exercise, you reduce those hormones and perhaps you can reduce cancer. So what's the takeaway, Dr. Siegel? Well, I think everybody should exercise more. And to David's point, I think, you know, look, some people can only walk. But always, people always say to me, you're walking so rapidly, Doc. You know why I'm walking rapidly? I get in the habit of walking really fast because that's more of an exercise. People that are wheelchair bound, there are exercises they can do. They can do upper body exercises. I think the bottom line here is, and another thing I liked about this study is, it got rid of the idea that smoking was playing a role or alcohol or or diet. Now we know those things play a role. So it looked at exercise alone without the smoking and without the alcohol. So I would say that it keeps tipping. And David's point that these were self-reported is a detraction on it. But overall, we keep moving in the direction. Exercise is good for your heart. We already knew that. Now it seems to be decreasing inflammation, decreasing I, cancer. I think what we're finding out, especially in my field of cancer, that exercise has to be parallel to what we do. Now there are patient studies coming from Austra Australia where people are getting chemotherapy in the morning and right after chemotherapy they're going to go to the gym and work out, which right. is something that we wow. never believed on. Fascinating. And we're understanding that there are things in the muscle that as you exercise, this cellular level basically go up and they can defeat cancer. So exercise 
before getting cancer, while you're getting cancer, and certainly now we have studies to show that it actually reduces recurrence ortho, which is really important. So what's the take-home message for a lot of people? It's never too late. Right. You can, even if you're 50s and 60s, you can catch up with some of this. And, and even, tremendous. Dr. Siegel, I was reading in the study, even if you're obese, a little bit of exercise will go a long way to preventing some cancers. I think that group, and we need further study on this because we looked a lot at intense exercise here, but that group that's obese has all the inflammatory markers in the world. And those are the group that, by the way, that Sloan Kettering is looking at specifically. People who already have cancer, that are, as David said, they get their chemotherapy in the morning, they get on the elliptical or the treadmill in the afternoon, and their recurrence rate and the spread of cancer goes down. It's very dramatic. This study extends it to preventing cancer. So obesity especially, if you can get rid of that excess belly fat, yeah. you're going to decrease the amount of but inflammation. Well, what's interesting about Mark is saying, sorry to interrupt, but yeah. in, in the prevention world, there was actually a great study that came out of JAMA Oncology a couple of years ago that with three things, if you just get rid of smoking, which is not always easy, or alcohol, and right. add a little exercise, you can reduce the risk of cancer across the board by 40 percent, Greg. Right. That's a big deal. But you I mean, still have deal. environmental factors, of pollution, course. chemicals, so forth. A hundred percent, but eating genetic. everything, right. exercise, smoking, and alcohol, that right. can change the whole world, and pay attention to that. So, whoever wants to answer this, and you know, some people, don't you, uh, Dr. Siegel mentioned the elliptical and the this and that, some of that's intimidating. You know, it's like, how can I start small? I, I People, have, everybody has these Fitbits now. I have two points about this. Two Are points. you using what? yours? <laughs> Here are my two points. One, it for it's us. for show. One, <laughs> it's an accessory. Arthel, Arthel, one point is when you don't have to just spend less time on the couch. It's not only the time you're intimidated by the elliptical. It's less time on the couch, more time getting up, standing, moving around, walking around. Second point is when you do go to the gym. Bring something there to distract you, like a book. This is what I do. I'm watching billions now, so I bring it to the gym. I won't allow myself to watch it unless it's in the gym. So I, so I use Pavlovian this is conditioning. A, a yeah. Smart walker. That's what I do. I watch TV. I binge watch Breaking Bad or something like that. Great. Okay. I, I, I uh, watch uh, HGTV on the treadmill. Do you really? HGTV. More fun. Seriously? <laughs> or you can watch really? Sunday House Club while you exercise. Yeah. Well, I can't because I'm here and you can, but I can't. And I use my bit, bit, bit. Not enough. Sorry. It's a way to push you to it's do good. it. It's good. A lot yes, of people do it. It's very encouraging. Right. It's it works good. for me.